Uncle Bob confirms some news. Happy birthday to the creator, and a good friend is here, and he's brought the Force with him. It's Collider Jedi Council, right now. Welcome back to Collider Jedi Council. It's our Star Wars show. It's everything that we do on this show, talking about Star Wars. And joining us, as always, he might not be the grumpiest. He's close. It is Mr. Ken. I've got a book out on Amazon right now. Ken Napsok. That's <laughs> right. Why we love Star Wars. The great moments of the galaxy far away. You know why? This is making me have a good week. Uh, but I'm excited because we're getting out of town. We are. Going to Houston. Going to Houston. Live Schmodown, doing some comedy. I love the live Schmodowns. They're so fun and so fun to meet the fans. Yeah. That's why I'm in a good mood, Christian. I'm in a good mood for that, for sure, because you guys can still get tickets. Only a couple days left. The SchmodownLive.com. You can stream it also. But that's not why I'm really excited. Oh. I always get a kick out of our guest today. He's one of the nicest people that, that I've met in this space. He's a good friend of mine, Mr. Jamie Costa. Hello, Jamie. Hello, hello. How are Thanks you, Thanks for having me on. It's nice to have you on. It's nice to be on talking this. Talking Star Wars, man. This is, that's what we, Our love for Star Wars, uh, it, it is going to be a fun conversation here, too, because let's, let's start right off the bat, though, because mm -hmm. you and I got a chance to sit down after uh, I was, I was kind of moving and doing different things. I was just kind of sticking to hosting Collider Live and sticking to hosting this show, um, and I was doing some more things and I had talked to you about a potential I was like you know what I, I, I wanted to do something You're like, well it's funny you say that because oh, yeah. you're you're working on something right now and you've been promoting it and it's it's tell us what it is yes a Kenobi fan film love it uh, Kenobi no Obi-Wan where to come from <laughs> um, just Kenobi just Kenobi, Kenobi. Oh, that's Kenobi. good um, the whole family, yeah, <laughs> the whole lineage. Um, <laughs> it's about Bob Kenobi and <laughs> uncle, yeah. you know, uncle Bob Kenobi. And it's a new Co Christmas special. New Christmas special. Uh, um, so what? Yeah. So what's it what all about? So tell me. So yeah, it uh, it starts way back from, you know, we did a Han Solo one way back. Yep. It went good. well. It was fun. It was a cool new adventure for us. Um, Doug Jones was in that, right? Doug Jones was, was great, in it. Yeah. yeah. Just had a lot of fun support, um, and it, it really we just had fun with it, and a lot of fans appreciated it. Yeah. So few years later, we're like, crap, you know, Kenobi, that'd be perfect, you know, and we start, it's all, it always talks, it always happens when you start talking Star Wars theory, right? and then um, you see how, whoa, hey, that could actually line up, that would be cool if they made that, or if they answered some of these questions, all those fun things, right? and then we're like, well, hey, let's do that. Let's do that, <laughs> yeah, and then obviously, because we, Star Wars uh, Theory, yeah. who made that really incredible Vader film that we both liked very much, yes. in contact with him, I think what he also did was he put the fan film kind of back in the forefront and said, because there's a lot of times, like, when you see the fan films, and they're, some of them are done very well, some of them aren't done well, but you can see the passion that are behind them, right. but what he did, he almost made like a, like it was like a mini movie that you really took serious, and that's kind of where you guys are going with this as well. Very much so. And what so. you did with Solo, too. Yeah, well, and the Solo one was more of just a, an adventure we imagined yeah. somewhere, sometime, that Han and Chewie had. And yeah. Just a little, just a little episode kind this of thing. This connects to the actual but trilogy. this one, we imagine yeah. uh, it in the, the linear story of Star Wars and the saga, and and, and answer some some questions of closure. So if I was going to ask Obi Wan right now, and I said and I said Obi Wan, um, <clears throat> I'm excited to watch this movie. Uh, why should I watch this movie? <laughs> you want to watch this movie? I think I want to watch this movie because you're really going to love it. I think I'm really going to like this movie. Really love the, really love this movie to be honest. You're going to count it as head cannon. I'm probably going to count this one can as head cannon. Did you know that? You will count this as head cannon. I will count this as head cannon. <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. going to be the whole show. Yeah, okay, give it this it's, little. It's the best. He's the okay. best. Jamie's the best. No, but yeah, it's, uh, it's something we imagined that could be fun um, in that. But we don't try to push too much that would contradict if they did much with it later. Well, and then we're going to kind of get into that a little bit, too, because, Ken, I think that we had the story about Iger announcing, like, those new, uh, the new, the new movies in another yeah, series. Yeah, yeah you so want to get into it now? Why not? Where, but where, where, where can they find it again? Indiegogo? Where, where Indiegogo, we're actually in our last one or two days, nice. uh, and we're doing well. I mean, we've already raised more than we did at this point with our Han one. So. Okay, great. We're pumped. Right. And you got a pretty big producer on this thing now too, right? Yeah. So yes, dude, Instagram. Richard, uh, yeah. he's he's so cool, and he came in last minute, just you know, saying, "Hey, I'm a big fan. I'd Wants love to, to help. be a part of this." And so we're like, "Heck yeah!" And he's a good guy. So love it. So there Once you, you go. get Jamie with a real 
sexy thick beard. beard. And you guys, you guys no, shot all this already, right? No, you so we haven't shot anything, anything oh. yet. Anything you see up, any teasers that you see on the on the uh, interwebs, it's all test footage. Oh, I see. It's all to try to give you a little taste of what yeah. we hope to do more of. I see. Um, okay. No, we don't have <laughs> we don't have enough money to do anything yet. Uh -huh. So what are you <laughs> um, trying? What's what's the goal? You have it on the Indiegogo. What what? How much do you guys need to, to make this happen? We put a flag at the end, you know, for a goal of like forty something thousand. Yeah. But um, we do whatever we can with what we get. So okay. the more we get, the better we'll do. Awesome. So, so you guys want to see the Obi Wan, uh, excuse me, Kenobi fan film with the great Jamie Costa? Go on over there and check that out too, because I can tell you. I mean, I've known Jamie for a little while now, and I and I've said it on the Clara Live. I'd say it if he wasn't here. He's one of the most talented people that you'll ever meet, and he just he does not do an impression of somebody he becomes the person he becomes the character and i want to see kenobi because i feel that'll be if you can't get you in right now that's the man i want to see do it so you so go and support that cause because it'll be a very very exciting film and hopefully it will get you pumped you for yeah well, well this, hopefully and, it will spark and this, this. and this is kind of where we we go with this next particular thing ken there is some big news that came out about what bob Iger had said and we can mm -hmm. so we can say that it's part of it is the movie news so what 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 did what did uncle bob say now uncle bob was speaking at the moffett nathanson media and communication summit wow you know they have a great open bar and he was there the ceo bob Iger. he he said this i don't do a great bob Iger impersonation i kind of create a character for him almost like norm mcdonald's bob dole in the 90s uh we did a deal with david benioff and db weiss who were famous for game of thrones as if like no one's heard that right. and the next movie that we will release will be theirs and we're not saying anything more about that he does go on to talk about uh their hiatus uh from making the films obviously we know i mean there's a lot in this news dump because uh, we're going to talk about disney plus and the canon stuff yep. um he says uh we, we, we thought it would be smart to take a bit of a hiatus while we figure out what's next now we're not going to wait until the rise of skywalker is released and start figuring out we're actually hard at work at doing that already the conclusion that we reached was that three years was the proper amount of time to not only take a breather and reset but to really gear up for the next film's release. Yeah. That's our starting point. There's other little things that have emerged. Let's I do like in. that inside of our pictures here, we keep showing Knights of a Republic um, footage. No, or, no. Or, We're not saying any more about that. Yeah, there's not, it's not Knights of the Republic. I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty much guarantee. Now, taking place in the old Republic itself or thousands of years beforehand, I think that is also pretty much a given at this point. I think yeah. that you're going to... I still I still think that it would be a great way to introduce the religion of the Jedi, the religion of the Sith, how it came to be, show us new characters, and I think that regardless of whether you loved the last season, this season of Game of Thrones, or didn't like it, you can't deny what Benioff and Weiss have done for the previous seven seasons with the show. Even it was a lot of the things we were just talking about this that weren't in the books that they created, that they put in the show, that made the show great, and they can do that with Star Wars and. They will do that with Star Wars, and they'll they'll introduce brand new things and bring in new directors. Um, so I I think that this is going to be, as far as when it's going to happen, as far as when they're going to start announcing. I think within the year. I think that we'll probably start learning. D twenty three is this year too, so we'll probably know by by then what the movies are. What do you think, Jamie? Uh, yeah, I uh, I assume they're going to announce all that in time, uh, but I think they're going to be so careful with. I think they have that nice buffer now. Um, and I think they're going to be careful with like letting Mandalorian slip out yeah. strategically ahead of Rise. Um, but yeah, and then, yeah, gauge a lot off of Rise. Um, yeah, but so. do you think that, would you want to see them, Benioff and Weiss's movies, those, the, the ones that we're getting every two years starting in 2022, do you want to see it be Old Republic I in do. that era, or do you want to see something else? No, I, I would love that, Old, Old Republic. Yeah. Um, in fact, yeah, just before we see anybody like Yoda and all that, yeah. I, none of them. Like thousand, two thousand years. Yeah, before, right. I want to see those Sith, those rule of two, kind of working towards all that. You know, yeah. like I want, I want to see that. Ken, what do you think? So we we we've been talking about this yeah, yeah. for months. That yeah, we knew we, we, we've said as much. Okay, we get it. It's going to be the Ben Affleck Weiss. Just announce it, and yeah. they finally announced it. I mean, it was it was obvious. No, yeah. did it? Did anyone think that it wasn't going to be the Ben Affleck Weiss? Because everyone was putting these articles out like, oh. So, oh, it's, look at this. They, they, yeah. Everybody knew that it's, already. I mean, sometimes I know we can say we're in a bubble. I mean, let's be honest. It was two Comic-Cons ago that you and I had first heard, oh, Dan and Dave are getting some Star right, Wars stuff. Right, we heard some right, rumors. Right. And, you know, that could be party chatter. You don't put a lot of, you know, hey, we're all yeah. drunk at They've Comic-Con. Been talking for a long but you time. and I had a conversation two yep. years ago yep. about Dan and Dave doing Star Wars. You're right, yeah. Um, so 
Uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, obviously, I'm a Game of Thrones uh, fan. We're not getting into that discussion yeah. right now. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I know, hey, when you got a big-name big, big name filmmaker like Ryan Johnson, too, again, Last Jedi stuff aside, when that had already been announced, I, I get there's some questions, and there's this is a confirmation of at least that first film on that slate, which is something I'm sure we can talk into, kind of parsing out Bob's words and syllables. So I, I, I'm excited. I, I do hope... Um, uh, Dan and Dave uh, for the series uh, bring in uh, a lot of new fresh writers and names and directors and all those kind of things too, uh, in addition to some of the Game of Thrones people. We'll have a lot, a lot of time to discuss that. I think soon enough, though, by the summer, it's a good idea. Yeah. Whether Disney officially announces it or not, we might start hearing those rumblings. So there, yeah. there was question of who would get it, like it would, if it was Ryan's trilogy yeah, or yeah. If, it, if it was these guys yeah, first. Yeah, that's kind of what they, th- people, some people didn't know where who was going to get it first or if anything, because they had mentioned the Benioff. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. It's fair, but I mean, there's just the signs, the signs were there and it made so much sense with the fact that Game of Thrones is ending. Yeah. So it's like what their next yeah. project in two in, in 2022 would be this. And they've been prepping it, like you said, for like two years. Yeah. Uh, and it's just when are they going to start announcing what it's about? It's that's that's the, the question, because if it's coming out in 2022, um, I mean, that's shoot, shoot, man. That's three years. It's three years from now. So that's, I mean, that's is that it, it is 2022. That's the 2022, first one, right? 2024, 2026. So they December, have three yeah. years to start developing. So they don't necessarily have to announce this year. Um, well, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. They don't necessarily have to announce it. We might start hearing rumblings, yeah, yeah. true or not. You start hearing some right. things. And again, in development and things change, all that kind of stuff. That aside, we might start getting a, a picture. But it, it definitely seems like Uncle, Uncle Bob's not ready to, to not announce yet. it. Or yeah, I think they're gonna, and they're concentrating on their television series. And they're going to announce it. Yeah, they like want we're that. getting three of them. So we're going to be yeah. paying attention to the three series first and mm-hmm. then lean into the Benny and Weiss movies. But three. Three which ones, though, right? <laughs> Three series. Series. Well, that's the one, and we'll get into that. Do you want? Do you want when do well, we have that? Do we have that now. You talking about the the, 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 the Disney Plus? It's in yeah. canon, but we can talk about it now. Let's uh, just talk about let it me now. get it's the fine. thumbs up from Roca. That's okay, that's not a thumb. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, you want to talk about? It? Yeah, yeah let's talk about it now. Part of, part that, of that conversation. We know here. Disney Plus is is not only. Uh, huge! It's huge for 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 Bob Iger. He he's putting a lot of his legacy on uh, this and developing this. And uh, we know we got Mandalorian. We know we got Cast and Andor. We had rumors of a third series, but he kind of, without confirming directly, was like, "Yeah, we got another live action series. Probably going to do before uh, the new movies come out." So uh, there's always speculation what that is, but it's kind of interesting to have it from from Bob. When he says that, it's hard not to put Obi Wan as the front runner. It's just hard to because of the rumors that we've heard, the pretty confirmed sur- sources that said it was going to happen. You know, Star Wars Newsnet was the one that did yeah. the, uh, the the breakdown on that, and they have pretty reliable sources. Um, and it seems like that's very, very possible. Hard to not put that in the front. But the other thing that he said inside mm-hmm. of this conversation that ties in all this was that there are a, a ton of movies, I think it's at least six films that are in development. People shouldn't get too excited about that. Because that doesn't mean anything except they're, that they're just in development. What development could mean, and I said a lot of this on Collider Live the other day, it just means that there's a script that they're working with. And it's like, hey, someone, Jamie Costa comes in. He's a, he's a, he's a writer for, for hire that, that says, you know, I was going through some of the material. I have an idea that I think could work for a, um, a Quinlan Voss film. All right, what's, what's your idea, Jamie? Well, the idea is this. Okay, you know what? I like where you're going with that. Let's write a script with it. He's going to write a script. It's going to take him four months to do it. It's now in development. Right. And it comes back, Jamie, J- Jamie gets the script. We like what Jamie did, uh, but the first draft was, was fine, and thank you for your script. David Goyer wants to do some rewrites uh, for the Quinlan Voss movie. Goyer's gonna come in. None of this has been greenlit so far. He's just working on it. So that movie is now in, in development. Flip side of that is now we're working on a Darth Bane thing. It's in development. So there's all these projects that could be in development. Yeah. Nothing means that they're happening. It just means they're working on it, which is great. The same can be said for, you know, the TV series. It's a question of which show, you know, they're developing more than just the Obi-Wan for TV. So what's going to go? Like, what's going to happen? What do people want? Um, I happen to think it will be Obi-Wan. I think that they're going to, I think that if you really want, you know, you have to feel the need for this thing. You have to feel the want for this thing. And if they put Obi-Wan Kenobi with Ewan McGregor on Disney Plus and they have the Mandalorian, they have they have Cassiano, they have this, they have all the Marvel series. I mean, it's lights out. Am I, do, do you agree? And at, at a six ninety nine a month price right. point or $60 right. a year price point to start, you know, that could always go up. I get that. But, 
yeah, it seems like uh, they're really stacking the deck there in their favor there. Uh, yeah, you know, I know there's you guys were talking on Collider Live about Netflix and the future of that and everything. Netflix, you know, is, certainly isn't going anywhere, but Disney's Disney is striking out pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. And, and and yeah, I'd love uh, I'd love to see your take on Obi Wan, and I'd love to see you you and come back to Obi Wan. I mean, that's why we you're making it because you're passionate about Obi Wan. And literally, we yeah. hope to spark things. Like we just hope we want yeah. to see it, it, you, freaking you and McGregor come making, back. And yeah, you make it out of a love for a great character. Right. You're hoping uh, to get the popularity on it to make Lucasfilm go see. They they want this. They yeah, want it's, this. yeah, it's that urge too. Yeah. As, yeah. A, as a fan filmmaker, like yeah. just wanting to see it. I mean, right. like it should have happened. Um, I think before a solo movie should have happened. I mean, that, I agree me, with that. Money th it's a duh. It's it's a no. It's a no duh. But I I agree with that. But I think we run into a really good place here because I've said this on the show a thousand times. So I'll say it a thousand and one. I would prefer to see an Obi Wan series than I would a movie because a movie I get two and a half, two hours, two hours and fifteen minutes, and now I'm going to get around at least six to ten hours of Obi Wan and figuring it all out from that script that they had. What has yeah. also changed? Sorry, Jimmy, uh, to cut yeah. you off there. What has also changed for me as as a obviously pretty passionate Star Wars fan is is. Uh, as much as I, I love Solo, I would have loved if it was a series just to stretch out the story, but also the pressure wouldn't have been on it. And I, I felt I, as fans, we could have just enjoyed a little bit more yeah. movies have pressure. Yeah. And if and especially after Rogue One, Solo, we heard a lot of, uh, you know, ah, it's not what I wanted or go to another time period, which is what people want with this new series. Kenobi, as much as we would have loved it, people, I know there would have been people like, ah, it's the same old character. Why do we right, need him sure. face Vader? If it's on a on a show, I think there's a little less pressure, and then we could just sit down at home in our sweatpants and slippers, shirt optional, and watch it and just enjoy it as fans. I that, think that's, that's exactly what's going yeah. I thought that forever ago, I said, damn, just do it like a young Indiana Jones adventure, solos, yeah. you know, and because we already know his arc. We already know yeah. a lot of that. But we can see all the how he got stuff, all that jazz, you know, another way. In fact, start him young. I always wanted to see the movie start him at like eight years old. Then we wouldn't have even gotten mad at, you know, oh, is he looking like him or something or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you let him grow up, you know, and all that stuff. And yeah. Oh yeah, a series would have been perfect. Young Indiana Jones Chronicles is a is an often overlooked show in this modern fandom. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Uh, George and Frank Darabont, I think, was involved, and yeah. Rick McCallum was smacking his gum producing that. Yeah. So uh, it's a good example of what you can do. And yeah. with the, and now with what Disney Plus could provide that show with, right. it, you know, money and all that, you know, behind it. It's well, like, that's <sighs> the big that's the big thing is because, like we said, I mean, what's what's Endgame now? Like two point five something billion dollars whatever it is mm -hmm. like and that's just it's doing well it's doing well and that's just one of their properties lion king's coming out all these movies coming out they have a lot of money to throw yeah. and that's just that's just from the movies that's not including theme parks and all this other stuff that they have they have, they have a lot of money and the subscriptions the 6.99 are going to come flowing in they're going to get more money to spend on these shows so if you can throw three star wars shows out there and if it comes out to be because the question is are they going to do them yearly so will we get Mandalorian in 2019, 2020, uh, 2021, and then if it wraps up, and at the same time, will we get Cassian and maybe push it at a different time to where I, th I was always thinking at one point we were going to have two movies a year, but you could have two series uh, a year for sure. Do you think that they're going to do that, Ken, or do you think it'll be Cassian next year, no Mandalorian, then Obi-Wan the following, yeah. or how, how are they going to do I that? Think, I think you could speed it up. We always have the discussion of is, is there too much or Star Wars burnout, and I, I've never... I, I often say, like, even talking about Star I talk about Star Wars about five to six hours a week on shows here in Force Center, other places. While I was working on, on the book, I was writing in, in the evening times hours. You know what I still would do to relax? Put on a Star Wars movie. Yeah, right. I think if you're a fan, you're a fan. And if you, and if you can just want to dig in. So two series a year, because we already, you know, Rebels uh, not, yeah. and Resistance huh? uh, is going to come back. I, I think I don't, I, I'm excited by the possibility of just, you know, one in the spring, one in the fall. Yep. Give me six to eight, ten episodes, whatever. That's, that's and it's fun. also different when you have the streaming series, right? Because yeah, the movies, yeah. it's different. If you put two movies out, and maybe you say totally, fatigue, it's totally. A, people say, well, it's some people. I mean, you and I are going to see everything. They yeah, put we're going to see everything. Yeah. But there are some people that come out and say it was like a solo example, which didn't make money. Uh, people say. I'm not going to see that, but maybe I'll see the one uh, in I, December, as opposed to Disney Plus, yeah, to yeah. where you've already paid the money. You have yeah. it's six ninety nine. Even if maybe you didn't want to see it, well, I, I already have it. So I'll yeah. always check it out. It yeah. is it is interesting with like with Solo. There's you know the 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 the, the one screaming and shouting. There's ones like me who just love it and everything. And there was a lot of people who were just like fans. Oh yeah, I haven't seen it yet. And, right. and like I forget that there's just some people like oh cool, I'll get there. Yeah. And I think a streaming service would be less pressure. Right. Again. And and who knows? They might even do 
a series still with Han Solo. Right. I mean, they could mm, take they him could. in that direction, right? I mean, they could just be like, well, let's just now give him a show or something. Well, they never they never finished up a lot of the arcs that they set up for the first one because they, right. I think, probably, and rightfully so, because Star Wars up until that point had never failed financially. Right. They probably thought, yeah, well, this will do fine and we'll do a sequel. And then when it was like, no, nobody cared about that. He was then signed for two, I think, they right after. two or three. Yeah. yeah and, it was just, and it's just like, no, we're uh, we're good. So, but but if they're signed, maybe maybe if they yeah. were smart yeah. enough too, which you seem that they would be, that inside of that contract it also says that you, certain amount of hours that you mm -hmm. put in, or certain amount, of, it could be TV. It doesn't necessarily right. have to be because Disney Plus has been gearing up for a while now. Yeah. So I assume it was going around the same times that the solo deals were being made. But I have to be honest, I don't really think I want to see another Alden Ehrenreich uh, solo. A performance at all, and it's nothing against him. No, yeah. I think for the character that he was playing, he did a phenomenal job. He just wasn't playing Han Solo, in my opinion. It just didn't seem like Han Solo. I don't need to see that particular uh, character again. And it's not against his acting. I think his acting in the entire movie was great. Oh, it yeah. just was a different character. And I, I don't know if I need to see that. And I don't think he needs that kind of pressure. Right. In, inside of that, you watching a podcast over there, John? <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> Yeah, good for you. <laughs> I love that. Good. Uh, it's good. Jamie <laughs> used the force. Uh, but, but anyway, so it was just... Uh, it Keeping you on toes. I think that that's where I would, as a fan, say, yeah. let's do something else. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been okay to see him maybe cameo in, some, in another movie or something. Yeah. But but yeah, it's even so, it just, it just it just feels a little weird to have him as as solo. I would I, I wish they would have just done it as a different character altogether, and probably I think we I don't think he was more. written well either. I, to be honest, I yeah. didn't see the written character of Solo I as agree. much in that movie. I, agree. I, I didn't even, he, he, there was not a, enough James Bond Han Solo moments that yeah. made me go, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, You know, they didn't give him that. They no. didn't re let him be his movie, really. You, you don't just magically wake up and turn into that kind of personality. Like, oh, yeah, well, that's how he became to be Solo. No, no. He was born with that moxie, and yeah, he didn't he have it. He was running around the streets of Karelia, yeah. pickpocketing yeah, stuff. He just didn't have it. He didn't yeah. have it, but that's all right. Uh, what's, uh, what's next, Ken? Let's stick with uh, the moves. We got uh, movie news. Yeah. Movie news. John Anything Williams good? is already working on episode nine, uh, speaking with the Times via Slash Film. Uh, Williams said he's already seen an early cut of the uh, final film in the main Star Wars story, and he likes it, quote, very much. The Times also know that he beams when he talks about it, and he's apparently already written 25 minutes of score. Uh, in about a month of work. Uh, you know, again, we always would say, hey, what do you expect John to say? But it's it's great that he's interested. I, I think one of my favorite things about him, uh, we got to see him in concert, was that two years ago? You were there yeah, that yeah. night when he talked about, um, that is a really large picture, John Williams staring <laughs> at me. It's Sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Love it, Adam. Uh, um, I loved him uh, at Hollywood Bowl. He was talking about the Ray's theme and how yeah, that loves Ray's theme. Ray and Daisy Ridley specifically were the reasons he was like, "Yep, I'm definitely coming back." Right. He and he said like, "I never, never want anyone else to write for Daisy Ridley oh, and that's Ray." Cool. Like this is I, I just I love this character and, and he's got passion for this stuff. Uh, and this is his final one. Final one. Final one. Um, I am very excited to find out what we're going to hear the new things that he's going to do and play off the the original tr excuse me the original trilogy that he's he's kind of used a lot of that stuff in in the new the new trilogy and the stuff that he's come up with the new trilogy stuff for kylo and it's just been really epic as you know that john williams would do so the new themes for rise of skywalker yeah of course who the hell's not ready for another john williams uh, score i'm so interested because i John Williams, I have like listened to him too much. I literally have, yeah. if that's a thing. I don't, I don't think and it is. I don't think it, it is. No, it's no, not. I don't think it is. Some places it might be. <laughs> Around my house it is. Um, but yes, it is like, I think he almost, I saw this like meme or something once that was like, you know, er, you know people could be on this side of the aisle or this side of the aisle right now about Star Wars, but something that unites everybody right it's john and his yeah. music literally all the trilogies you, you never you never hear people going ah john williams sold out yeah I mean, you, know, you, <laughs> never, you never really hear bad things and about i think john he williams, knows true. more about the story of the whole deal uh, than any of us that's yeah, true because yeah. gosh when he does certain themes for oh, certain yeah. people it's oh, yeah. and i'm like wait does he know about how that connects and just stuff? you pointing <gasps> at, at palpatine to, to know that john williams is going to come back and do some more music for palpatine is going to be so good yes it's going to be so good uh, uh, all right, Ken, what's next? Uh, next, we're talking about the Palpatine. Uh, we got uh, someone tweeted, uh, Ryan Johnson, who, you know, love the movie or not, that guy has uh, stood front and center and, and generally in all situations kept his cool unless you attack his actors right. and, and tries to just, you know, 
hope you enjoy my movie. Don't enjoy my movie, great. But he, someone tweeted about uh, uh, Snoke uh, and saying, hey, uh, hey, man, this is a guy named Brian Dunn. Hey, man, Rando weighing in, which I love that. But I think it speaks to the difficult to see always emotion as a future line. Yoda spoke with Empire Strikes Back. Snoke, Kylo, and Ray all see some version of the throne room confrontation and interpret it differently. Ryan Johnson tweeted back, and Snoke shares something with Palpatine and he, uh, the meme of Luke saying, oh, your overconfidence is your weakness. And just kind of connecting the same kind of, not necessarily connecting Snoke and Palpatine to the same person, but just kind of the themes uh, playing there. And I think it's just interesting uh, connecting to Palpatine maybe back in some way, shape, or form. And was there, uh, you know, your speculation, Christian? Christian, uh, Christian's your name, right? Not Kristen? Yeah, whatever um, it wants to be. Kristen. That, uh, you know, what does Palpatine know about Snoke? There's, I mean, there's <coughs> a lot of different theories, right? One of them is that he, similar to the way he recruited Thrawn, um, uh, unknown regions type thing, found him from the unknown regions, brought him in. Other theory is, is a similar type of thing to where from like the Legends material that he was some type of formation of Palpatine in general. Mm -hmm. uh, that there is maybe some, uh, whether it's, that's why he's so damaged. If, I always use the comparisons of like Voldemort and what Voldemort had to do uh -huh, and the pain uh -huh. that Voldemort was coming through and the form he wasn't exactly back there. So this is, in essence, the Emperor, a, a, a way for him to come back, which is possible. Uh, I, I think he was working for him one way or another. That's my, my opinion is that Palpatine had Snoke as one of his agents. That's, that's kind of where I go with it. But I can see any of these things working. Again, it's just this, the age old thing. It's all about execution. Yeah, I, in regards to the actual tweet response, I would say I think the only comparison, it's just me, I think uh, Ryan's putting is, is the whole pride of, mm -hmm. of this guy thinking he's got you know, he's the overconfidence. Right. Uh, and then, and it might, who knows, maybe it's connecting the fact that the person who he thought he had each time of these guys uh, was a Skywalker. Right. Maybe. Your faith in your friends is yours. I oh, love it. This is my favorite uh, Emperor line, other than roll it again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> roll it. Yeah, I love, the, I love that <sighs> idea. I love, the, I love the, the, the poetry, as George would say, of, of Snoke not seeing uh, Kylo's heart, only part of it, uh, so just as the Emperor I think to early Return of the Jedi of, you know, my son is with them. Mm, I haven't seen that. Are you sure about that? And, and I love that 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 can that kind of stuff's there, these big villains. I know? love just to ride that real quick. The funniest yeah. thing, I watched Return of the Jedi recently yeah. and like he does, he goes, hmm, strange that I have not yeah. whatever. Well, then like literally five seconds later, Emperor goes, yes, you'll go and meet him on the moon. I have foreseen it. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. you. How long have you foreseen that? I think <laughs> I love, but yeah, yeah, I love, and I think that's what's great about this kind of Phantom Menace type character. I was talking to, you know, talked a lot about the my favorite moment with uh, him and Padme and, and Phantom Menace, where she kind of catches him off guard, but he's quick to be like, and it is kind of a snake oil salesman at some time too. I love that, like, just because he's got those <laughs> dignitaries around him, similar to those just guys. Yeah, he's just like, totally bullshit. Oh, you have a son? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I love, uh, I love what Star Wars New Canon has done. Really, really highlighted the rivalry re between Vader and Palpatine in a way. I love that. Where they don't, you know, they, they love hate relationship, boss. <laughs> you know, they've done it. A, yeah. They've done it a lot in the comics. Which yeah, is yeah. Great, it's a lot. Sure. In the yeah. Comics, yeah. A lot. All right, what's next? Uh, next, hey, oh by the way, you know who uh, celebrated a birthday this week? Uh, number seventy-five, Mr. George Lucas, King That's of the right. Flannels. And the creator, he is the, with a capital T and a capital C, the creator of all of this. Yes, a lot of people helped along the way. Gary Kurtz, uh, Marshall Lucas, a lot of people made this possible. Ben Burt, Phil Tippett, we can go on and on. John Dykstra, Joe Johnston. But at one point, George Lucas sat down in his office with a pen, uh, not, actually not even a pen, a paper and a pencil, and started writing The Adventures of Luke Starkiller. Mm -hmm. We got to pay homage to the creator. Of course. I mean, we're not, I said this again this morning on live. We're not sitting here today right now talking about this with, without him. Yeah. Was you talking about Flash Gordon. Uh, <laughs> so and, cool. and Apocalypse Now, and Apocalypse which he was now. supposed to do after right. Star Wars. That's right. Yeah. But George Lucas is, uh, he's still very much involved. He's, he's, a, he, he's an ambassador. He goes and he, he talks, to, there's a lot of projects that he is, is still, he was on the set for The Mandalorian. And which is very exciting because I still say it to this day, and uh, I, where I still don't think that the scripts themselves, I never thought that George Lucas was a great script writer. He's, he's not, but he's a phenomenal storyteller. Yeah. One of the best, if not the best of all time. And he knows, I mean, if you look at what he did in the Clone Wars, he, I mean, he was, that was him. And then he taught Dave Filoni. So when he's working with Dave Filoni on Mandalorian, and you know Dave Filoni's going to go, you know, I got a couple questions about this. Yeah, you know, he should probably do this because I don't think this will happen. Mm -hmm. And you're going to listen to George. And he's he's around and he's, he's 
He's still pretty damn active. He never really, I don't care how much he sold it for. He can, ne he's never going to walk away from it completely. He loves it too much, even though, you know, there's some things he probably has been shut out of for sure. And I know the fans, we don't want to believe that, but it, 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 there's certain things that he's just not involved in and that's fine. The other things that he is, because you, that's the beauty of it. He's there to whether or not you have access if you, if you want it or you can choose to do your own thing. Some people have chosen to do their own thing. Others have, have decided to use his access, and I'm glad that they did. So happy birthday to the man. Is, uh, is it true that uh, JJ's working with him, kind of? I, 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 would, I, would be venture, bizarre. I would venture off and say no. I don't think man. that they are working together at all. That'd be the way to that's, sell it, though, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. That's my, that's my, 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 I don't think he has anything to do with episode nine. I think Mandalorian, he's doing some stuff. I think Benioff and Weiss, he's been doing some stuff, but I don't think he has anything to do with episode nine at all. Yeah, Ken. Uh, just just, just thoughts. On, just, <laughs> just thoughts. Just thoughts on the. Yeah, man, I love George. I love George. One of my, you talked about the Mandalorian. You know, one of my favorite parts of the panel was with Favreau. Much like a lot of people, it's just like hey, I'm working with Dave Filoni. You know, he's helping. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the prequels. He's make me uh, made me appreciate him more. That's uh, one of the things I love doing yeah. too. And because uh, for all the. Uh, you know, stepping in the poodoo and, and all the things that you might not like about it. There is this wonderful world building and story and themes mm -hmm. and, and all connect to the emotional, the emotional canon of it all, uh, as we said over on Force Center a lot. And uh, I just love what George has done. And, and it's, I'm a fan, man. You're a fan. You're a fan. Yeah. Like, I just love this crazy world, this, this hippie from San Francisco, right. Modesto, sat there and created. Um, in in the early 70s because he couldn't do Flash Gordon. Yeah, he's got uh, great hair, doesn't he? Yeah. He's still, I'm, I, as someone who really has no hair anymore, I it's amazing, would that die hair. for that hair. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've talked before how I never have met him, but I walked past him at the Grove. And I know some people, Mark Riley's met him a few times. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I really actually want to meet him because he seems like a real, you know, quiet, leave me alone, I got my flannel. Yeah. Uh, not, not grumpy, I'm grumpy, but sure. he, you know, I'd, be, I'd be nervous. This what outfit. do you do? What do you do, Jamie? Yeah. If you I, meet George Lucas, what do you do? Uh, I enjoyed all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love your movies. Yeah. Yeah, Just, I, well, I, I, not really. Yeah, I really do. I, actually, I saw him on the solo uh, carpet mm -hmm. uh, at that premiere, and like, I was just, it was kind of just nice just to just, just look at him and then not bother him. Kind of like Harrison Ford. I met him. And yeah. He's like grumpy, he funny good. uncle, and you know, it's just rather yeah. see him be him. Did you interview him? No. Oh, okay. No, I yeah. talked to him I mean, for a brief second. But that's it's it. cool. so weird because it's like it's a solo premiere. I uh, I got to stare at Lawrence Kasdan while he put a second round of tri-tip on his plate. Nice. Ooh. And I was two feet from him, saying, "Say something. Say something. Say something." It was like you and me with John Williams. And I was just like, "Now nah, I'm gonna let Lawrence Kasdan need his tri-tip," but I yeah. just want to say, "Thanks for." Yeah. You know, hey, we all have those passions. It's fans. Did you do your Han Solo impression? No. It was funny, though. And this was at uh, Comic-Con when I met um, Harrison. But <laughs> as he was talking to me, I did notice, just because I am, like, attracted you're to watch, yeah, you're his, watching. like, features yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah. And he, you know, as he's like, oh, yeah, man, and talking to me, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, McCooga just did that recently. To, um, well, accents. I do it with accents. Liam, I heard Liam you on Cloud. I do the same thing. Uh, I was seven years old in Yosemite ordering pizza from a British dude. I was like, I'll have another. My mom's like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, Liam, Liam Cunningham came on, and, and, he, and he's, he's Irish. And, and, McCoo, and he's like, hey, how are you? And, uh, and, and uh, McCougar goes, good, fine, how are you? And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? Man? <laughs> <laughs> you it's going to be great, though, if you're just like studying facial tics. And yeah. Harrison's like, what are, what are you doing? Yeah, it's just, well, it's osmosis for me. I mean, right. that's how I... You're I mean, Ross Mark, you know, he's he said it like he's yeah. Yeah. watches movies and that's where he gets his, you know, impression or whatever. Yeah. But same with me. If I watch him, I just enjoy it. It just it just kind of. Right. That's the difference between become because you're watching the real human like kind of it's not just trying to get the voice like me. I just yeah. my stupid impressions. I'm just listening to voice and go, oh, it sounds that sounds right. Yeah, I'm you're, No, you're doing facial expressions. <laughs> you're doing body movement. You're, you you got to become the yeah. person. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the difference. Um, but yeah, because you guys remember when you saw, when you watch that solo film, it's like that's that's got to be tough to, or maybe it's not. Is it, it you're you're just kind of locked in, right, the whole time for doing uh, for being for being the most Harrison. important thing and the thing I keep learning more and more and more, even doing this Kenobi stuff coming up. Yeah. It's just it's the most important is to do the character. Period. Yeah, I I already acknowledge that I can be there halfway, yeah. you know, and if I you know hopefully everything will kick in and make it emphasize even more to make you be like oh that's that's reminiscent of the Han or Ben Kenobi we know or whatever 
but most important is getting that character right. You got to do this for the fans because I know they're going to want to like. So you do you do quite a handful of Star Wars characters, right? I, I would. I, I don't know. It's it's up to you. Guys. All right, I'll, 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 I I'll never say, claim anything. All right, all right. So I'll I'll ask you to give me a little uh, a little some some characters. You come up with some some stuff. Give me give me a little bit though. Don't just uh, not just not just a line because because they because I I'm a fan. I want to hear it. But give me give me a little Han Solo first. Uh yeah. I've been from one side of the galaxy to the other, and I haven't seen any show like this. Fair. Thank you so much, Han. And Obi-Wan Kenobi, obviously. Which Obi-Wan Kenobi? Because if you're wanting me to do Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Anakin, 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 Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> and what about, what about classic uh, Sir Alec Guinness? The Force is what gives the Jedi his power. I guess it's almost. Yeah, there. you got in there. What about, what about, uh, <coughs> can you, what about C-3PO? <laughs> you do right. C-3PO? What about the mouse droid? <laughs> the mouse droid. <laughs> Come on, squeak! Have you done C-3PO before? I don't even know what lines to oh, do yeah. with C-3PO. I'm on Jedi counter. Oh my! That's not bad. Wait, <laughs> that's actually really, really good. R2D2. That's, that's right. That's really good. That's good. Yeah, you are. You're just, you are. You just. It's, I'm convinced there's a computer. Do the right core. Dance. <laughs> do it. Dance. Do the right core. Do Jabba's little. Monkey. <laughs> that that was the best part. Did you see the footage? You saw the footage for Mandalorian, right? No. The, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to give it up. Then there's a great. You, you bring. Well, I mean, I saw some. Of, I saw it. some yeah. of the leak stuff. Just but. some good stuff. Uh, oh. Anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's let's move on. Can we go to canon? Uh, that's uh, we we were talking about Disney <coughs> Plus. That's in canon. Uh, Moving on to canon. Mi- yeah, yeah we, we're into canon. Oh, that's hey, that's hey. <laughs> was it, you said right before the show we were talking about if Twitter existed when the Seinfeld finale. Yeah. I said that. Oh, I'm glad we <laughs> Can didn't. Can you imagine? I'm or Sopranos. Gl- Supra- oh, I'm glad we didn't have to go oh through that. Oh, my God. I can't oh, imagine man. what Twitter would have been like if, during the Sopranos finale. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Get yeah, me out of there. Have, yeah, or the oh. Shears finale. No, it's eight. No. I'm dating myself. No, but if, I think the, the Seinfeld and, and, and Sopranos would have been misery. Yeah. Misery. Yeah. yeah. Get off Friendster. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, let's talk first this. Uh, no. Uh, Roka put this in notes. Hey, I got a new book out. I already promoted it, but uh, check it out. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, IndieBound, or at a bookstore near you. If they don't have it, just go up and say, "Hey, order this book." Uh, you don't have to do that. Do it like that too. Just like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that Jennifer Murrow is the is the quote. Jennifer Murrow. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's great. She, uh, uh, got got some nice endorsements. I got a. Uh, you know, I I didn't I'll, I did not ask you and Alice because I have a you in the acknowledgments. Okay. I want that known. Okay. Uh, you don't have to read to the end. You just you know wrote a I nice thing. The, I, I, want, I wrote a nice thing. I want to read the too. whole thing. All right. Because Alice asked me, he's like, I, I get to endorse yeah, the book. I was, the like, I was like, no. I got to buy it, right? Uh, no, I'll get you a copy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, get you a I'll copy. send you an e-book. Hey, send me an e-book. Roka's got to pay. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. He did buy it yesterday. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, anyways, that's uh, it's fun. Uh, you know, you talk about the passion of making fan films. This yeah. is definitely a, a book from a fan's point of view. So um, that's what's going on. I, like I, appreciate, I appreciate putting that in there. Adam, that's a great picture. I mean, I took the picture yeah, on it. People buy that book. Black Series so Rebel set. Get that but, book. Uh, get that book for, uh, for, for Ken Knapsack because this is a guy that, you know, you want to, th- there's a reason I chose him for the co-host in the first place. It's like this is someone. Uh, I, Ellis was busy? Uh, well, Yeah. Probably and well, because you don't. You also don't think Return of the Jedi is the best Star Wars. So, um, but I have other opinions. People don't like about Star Wars. But that's alright. But that's also why I love you because the yeah. thing is, Ken and I have been talking Star Wars since we started since doing stand up comedy back in the day. Stand up comedy and, the, and the the, while well, I was waiting to bring you up on stage. Yeah. yeah, and I and I and when we when we had this iteration of the show and they said, oh, who do you want for the co-host? I said, there's no, there's, there's only one person I want for the co-host. And yeah, and Ken and I yeah. were able to because Ken yeah. knows Star Wars inside and out. And and he does. He approaches it as a fan and has a lot of positive views about things in general. Right. And uh, and and it's it's it's. I'm excited for you and I'm excited to read it. Thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. I you told me about it. it you told me about the book when when you were working on. It. You got we couldn't say anything about. Yeah, it. Yeah, I couldn't really say anything. I was doing. Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, digging in over the last six seven months. Um, and shout out to Mango Publishing for working with me on the yeah. book. And shout out to our. Friend Alicia Malone, who kind of got you about to do it, right? Had, had lunch with Alicia and was yeah. like, "I think I kind of want to write a book, and and Star Wars kind of makes sense, and that's what we went with." So, love it. Uh, that's that. It's that now. You can find it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go. Uh, so speaking of other books, those comical booklets. What's on? Uh, what's going we on got a lot coming out, and I, I think it's good. We don't talk a lot about them because we read them at different times. Yeah, it's we been read harder them. these it's days. It's hard to keep up. I usually go once a month to uh, my shop yeah. or to Northridge and get a huge, huge stack. Yeah, and I've been. But, I've been honest with the fans too. I've been a little yeah. bit in the butt by Canon. 
in over the last like year. Right, right. So, so you pulled off a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit until until I start seeing it deliver a little bit more in if I, in inside of the films and and maybe that'll happen inside of the Benioff White stuff, maybe in the TV series. Mm. Um, but until I see mm. it start to pay off a little bit more, I think I'm I'm just. I am going to dive into that Claudia Gray book. I'm, I'm on my flight mm-hmm. to Houston. I got to dive into that. And? I really, I really love it. You know, so I, you would ask me a couple weeks ago and I wasn't finished the book. And yeah. I said, of, all, of her four, four books, this might be my number four. And then I, someone tweeted me and they, and, and they didn't misunderstand me. They're just like, hey, it's my least favorite of hers as well. That's not what I mean when I right. say it's my fourth rated out of Claudia's four yeah, books. They're all she's, awesome. but she's, I'd you, say yeah. she's the best Star Wars uh, n- novel writer out there Easily. right now. And there's a lot of great ones. Love right. Alexander Freed's work, uh, Beth Rivas, C.K. Johnston, all James those. Cino. Yeah, James Lucino. James Lucino, Chip All of them. I really love, I do love all of them. But um, she's, she's fascinating. And uh, the only, like, you know, not, the only thought I have is, like, there's a main story that, that's really good and has some parallels to, to current society and everything, which is great. But she, the stuff with Dooku in the past and this other Jedi that's create, that's a new creation for the story, and the stuff with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, oh. but the stuff she writes Qui-Gon, like, you can hear Liam's, yeah. Neeson's voice. I love that. Dude, you need to get, have you, it's have, the best. have you actually, have you looked into um, doing some of the narration for these books? I have not. I've only been with a, a legit voiceover agent for about six months. Well, they got, you know what? We got to contact them. Just apply, them just no, apply but for no, the job. But but just, you know, go to that site. No, no. It's like I, my mom. Why is not you Harris? in Harris? No, no. We should connect them to, we should connect them to Del Rey, man. Because like, yeah. because De, like it's, you, I mean, especially with the, 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 the voices that you're able to do would be, would be great. So yeah, you should, you should, I mean, Eric, I know you're watching, man. Try to, try to figure out how to get this guy to do some, uh, do some voices for you. He's, he's, the best you, you're ever going to see, so check it out. Uh, um, what's next? Well, I wanted to say, because Jamie mentioned you've been reading some of the comics, too. Have you been c- plugged in, connected with a lot of the, the big storylines? Mostly the Vader ones. The um, Vader ones, yeah, which are both have been I'm pretty only, good. I'm yeah. only about halfway into those, but uh, mm. I love them. They, they, I've got refueled on a lot of them. I, I was just Have like, cool. Okay, cool. There's some stuff in it that got me going. Sometimes it got a little bit like, okay. okay. Science fiction. Yeah. Sometimes I say that, like comic booking. I don't mean that as an insult, but sometimes it's like, wow, this is wonderful, crazy, yeah. wild comic book stuff that necessarily wouldn't work on the big screen or right. story. But that's part of the fun of reading comics, obviously. Right. But yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. All right. What's um, next? That's it for canon. Uh, we can go to tweets. All right. Now it's time to talk to you guys. We're going to... We have a hashtag collider Jedi Council. We have asked you guys to submit some questions, and you have done it, and Ken's going to go through it. All right, first one comes from uh, Todd Ortiz. Kind of ties back to a conversation we're having about the TV series and Disney+. Plus. Uh, he writes, I would love to see the Crimson Dawn storyline play out and what happens between Kira and Maul. What do you think the chances are we could see that story thread in the Cassian series, even if it's season two or later? I think that's a great spot for it. Uh, kind of goes back to that conversation. We talked a lot about Solo, Alden, but... Um, whether I get Amelia Clark for that, I mean, it's possible, certainly. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, a lot of people do want that particular story even more than Lando or Solo. Just like, what's going on there? Is that something you'd be interested? In? The Cassian part of it, I, I, I like. If they yeah, that's because sorry, we've talked about yeah. this before, but tying into Cassian. If you can tie that into it and make it and make that play into it, I'd be more acceptable of doing that than giving it its own series. Mm-hmm. I just, and again, it's nothing again. I just don't really care to see an entire series, but an arc. Is a different story because that that to me was very intriguing at the very end, and you have you can have Ray Park come back and have, have, have wh- where kind of answer the question because we know where he lands, we know what happens to Maul, right? So, but yeah. we don't know about this particular storyline, and to do that inside of a Cassian, and that's another way to bring in f- the Force a little bit. I love them introducing that the old Maul, yeah. you know, kind yeah. of thing. But man, I really, really, really feel like they had it originally written that that was going to be Boba Fett. Like right there on the screen, and the, it's gonna be him, like in, in the solo movie. There's what did they say? Mandalorian in that room. Yeah. What did they armor. say though? It wasn't Boba Fett, but it was it was Ron Howard pitched somebody else, and yeah, then that's right. and then it was Lawrence Kasdan's son who said, "Let's do Maul." M- yeah, John wanted Maul. Like yeah, Jabba or something. I can't, I don't know. I can't yeah. remember. It, no, to it be was. Honest. I don't. I don't remember who it was, but it wasn't. I don't think anyone knew that it was. But I love the idea of like, droid. hey, yeah. Maul, and let's see him again, and Ray Park and all that. But it was, yeah didn't feel quite right and then he turns on his lightsaber f- for no reason and some stuff. right right so but, it's, it, but to, to arc it into uh cassian if it fits depending on how far back they go in the cassian story i don't want to i don't really want cassian to pick up like six months before rogue one i want it to go back i want to see when mm-hmm. he's a separatist i want to see all that stuff have i missed out what's he why is he 
a big follow, a big what? intrigue for a show and stuff. Uh, I mean, I think because some <laughs> people say that, they're like, well, who cares because we saw where he lands. Right? I loved so him. He thought happens. he did great, but I didn't think it was a... I think it's more about the political landscape and what where he was in the time period of where he is that makes it fascinating. And the fact that you can get a guy like Diego Luna to do yeah. a show, you, you, you grab him. Yeah. Um, but I think it's more about the time of, of what happened. In, it, it's a, like, let's say it's because he's what about 35 36 is give or take in in rogue one sure so if you take and you start it when he's around 15 the series you know before you pop into diego luna actually doing it, you go back 20 years from from uh from rogue one where does that place us in the timeline that's 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 right around right around that's sith, that's yeah. right around sith so that's if cool. you did that so where it started out between the separatist stuff of what's happening and you take us from right after revenge of the sith leading up to rogue one and that's the history of of cassian learning that journey why not? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, but I don't know if they're going to go there. I, I just, I don't want to see just missions, just missions like six months before leading up to the Death Star mission. Cause that to me, that's dull. Uh, that, that, that we've done already. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's next? Zach Kramer's writes uh, this. Uh, so I re recently listened to Dooku Jedi Lost. Uh, I haven't started that yet. Have you started that, Christian? The audio? No, I have it, and, uh, and I have not. I'm gonna, I guess I'll listen to it in my car. I'm going to try to listen to it on the flight to Houston. Yeah. Uh, and the first half had some serious Harry Potter vibes that I really enjoyed. How would you feel about a Star Wars uh, a story that has younglings run around the Jedi Temple uncovering mysteries? I like that kind of mystery team idea there. Uh, we've heard this kind of thing before about a Harry Potter for Star Wars yeah. and everything. Uh, would you like something like that? Sure. And I think it's the same, it's the same thing. Who's in it? Who's writing it? Who's directing it? Is it a TV show or a movie? I think a TV show could be cool. Um, setting into what period? Because the other thing that Benioff and Weiss, if it lands in the old Republic, right? It also opens up an entire new playground mm -hmm. for series and new movies. Because if the Benioff and Weiss series creates brand new characters and things like, oh man, I'd love to see a spinoff of Hussam Bim or whatever, whoever comes out, right? It's like, oh, great. That guy was such a cool character. They didn't even know he was going to pop the way that he did. Yeah. But now he's got his own series. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a brand new playground that's going to happen. So if this series that he's talking about with the young younglings doing adventures, maybe it's during that time. You that, know, it doesn't have to be now. It sounds cool, to be honest, because yeah. I, I think, okay, how can you help introduce the youngest of people into Star Wars right now? And then, like, something like that would actually be kind of fun and then like you know hint at the main story icons or something throughout it you know? sure that'd be cool and i also think adapt from books it's okay to adapt from books like there's there, there, that's one of the things star wars hasn't done that i think obviously served harry potter pretty well adapt from the good books they never adapt from their good books they take story elements from it but they don't adapt well, they have so much material that's funny because we have this question here from aj barrera uh, at tempty 91 i love that name do you think we could ever see lucasfilm adapt new canon novels and our comics to animated films similar to dc is done with their animated project talking specifically about animated yeah. films i but don't that know ties why they what you do it, yeah it's like it's like the powers that be have this thing they won't do it they it's like it's they they think that it's like just the book readers of the book readers and they don't adapt and they have so much great stuff take those novels once again for the 87 time to hear me say it from drew carpetian of 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 that series the other thing that i would love to see by the way is what if this third series is is james lucino's darth plagueis oh yeah and imagine mm -hmm. 10 episodes based off of that novel because the thing is you, you can take you can take ex and you can make it the same way that Ken, Ken knew what was coming in season two of Game of Thrones because he read it he did not hurt his enjoyment of the series whatsoever he wanted to see the way it was executed from the book thing so what so I've read Darth Plagueis and I know where it's gonna go have you read that book I have not I've heard it's great but that's my point but you'd be interested to see it if it, it adapted that met Tom Hiddleston as as Palpatine oh. and and coming in and Plagueis and how it all came to be in this 10 episode arc based off and adapted from the James Lucino, Lucino novel I guarantee you I, I guarantee that. you that is a smash hit that, depending on who you get to direct those episodes that is a smash hit and uh ridiculous that they've never adapted stuff from their their novels ridiculous Ken, do you think uh, they should ad adapt? Will we, we see them adapt? I, I don't know if I don't know if we will, but Disney Plus changes that game. Great. They're mad about it. Yeah, they're mad about it. Um, 
uh, so I, 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 I definitely want it. A version of Lost Stars, you know, <laughs> Leia, Princess of Alderaan with Billy Bobby Brown. I'm on board for all of this stuff. Can we not have the, uh, the, the so Death rhythm. Star? <laughs> so rhythmic. So rhythmic. You know, am I supposed to actually start talking during this? I don't know. Turn your horn off! <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> it worked out. Force is strong. <laughs> Come that into the table. Turn off, dude. That, that was great. Do it. Anyways. Yeah. All right, next. Yes. Um, final one I got here. Yeah, let's do it. Last kind one. of in the same theme, but uh, I like this because it's a character I don't think uh, we always talk about, but people love him. This is from Big Sal. What's up, Big Sal? It says, would a Cad Bane TV series or film be great? I'm shocked that the best Star Wars bounty hunter ever has not gotten any attention on his own comic series. I'm really hoping he gets his own TV series. It would be awesome. That's all caps on awesome. Oh, I love Cad Bane. You love Cad Bane, I do. Right? I have a question for you because I'm so confused uh -huh. about this. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I know that the scene between Boba Fett and Cad Bane in the, uh, the Clone Wars that never oh, aired, right, yeah, yeah. where they both shoot each other, right? Right, right. I know that that's canon. I know that they announced that that's canon. Oh. Is Cad Bane dead? Do we know that? Is that confirmed? Because I always thought that he wasn't. I always thought that I heard right, Filoni right. say that he, they both survived it. Maybe I was Cad wrong. Maybe I was mistaken. But what it seems is if Boba Fett, well, some people think that Boba, because I, remember, I mentioned one time I like to see Cad Bane come back. Like, well, he's dead. Harloff can't come back. Boba Fett killed him. Uh -huh. like, but is that... The case? I'm, doing, I'm doing some some research on that right now. Haven't we learned, Christian? According no to no one's ever really gone. I know that's, that's right. That's true. We haven't learned anything though. According uh, to <laughs> Wikipedia, yes, uh, he is still alive. Still alive. Uh, that I'm making sure I'm in the canons tab. Um, Good yeah. So still what? Potentially. Okay. Potentially. Well, so it's a weird. I know it's it's a weird spot because it was nothing the, never the aired. The answer is yes. I, I would love for him to come yeah. back because I also think yeah. he's a character that could be, you know, it, it, he, whether you do a motion capture or you do, or you can actually do practical effects. However you want to do it, he could look really, really cool. He's a great character, and I hope that they do use him. And, and the thing is, if he's not dead, you could put him in one of these series. He could mm -hmm. pop up in any one of these series. And Young Baba, I think, voiced that one, right? The, from Attack of the Clones, came back and voiced the unaired version. Oh, um, you're talking about for Boba Fett? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but not, not, not Daniel Logan. Yeah, yeah, no, no, in that bit. In that yeah. bit, yeah, 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 Daniel Logan came back. Yeah, yeah. him and, come back, too. And Corey Burton is the one who does the voice of Cad Bane. Yeah, I, I mean, he's great when he pops back up in the comics and he has yeah. a relationship with R.S. Singh and, right, right, right. and all those kind of things. And what's interesting to me is, you know, sometimes you might, like, how, how do you translate an animated character or a comic book character to the main main screen. He's a Duros, which we saw in New Hope, so we've seen it on screen right. before. So even updated uh, technology would make it even look better. So uh, I love the idea. He's a great character, cult following for sure. And he he changed the tone too of that Clone Wars series, especially if you yeah, he did. if you watch it in the release order, which is not necessarily the the chronological order. He shows up at the end of that season one, and it's like, yeah, this show with the, you're when still they hijacked the thing. Yeah, right? you're yeah. still yeah. Snips is becoming a silk. All right, you're getting through some things. There's the droids, and all of a sudden, it's like this dude comes up and he's killing clones and yeah. politicians. It's like, whoa, the tone has changed, and I think that's part of his legacy. I would love for him yeah. to come back. He's one of my favorite characters of all time. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Collider Jedi Council. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Also, like to thank our guest first with Jamie Costa. Jamie, one more time, where can the kids find uh, find your link to go support Kenobi on Indiegogo type in Kenobi and if you want to find us on Facebook that's where we post all the updates and if you type my name with Kenobi you'll find something Ken Napsock one more time plug that book where hey, you get it? yeah why we love Star Wars a great moment to build the galaxy far far away uh, good to have you on here J Jamie you're one of the nicest people we've met in this business uh, and I uh, love uh, love having you on and doing your voices work on that mouse droid I want a mouse droid <laughs> yeah I'll have it next time please do and for us we will be in Houston one more time at the Booker T Arena that's right Smow down. we're gonna be there for the <laughs> schmodown so make sure that you come and join us once again at the booker t arena in houston and man are we excited to be there inside of a wrestling arena andrew guy ben bateman on the undercard you have john roca and dan merle going up against double toasted it's going to be i mean something else in a wrestling ring the outlaw in a wrestling ring come and see us and if you can't <laughs> 
If you can't be there to see us, please check out the live stream at theschmodownlive.com. You don't want to wait until next week. I guarantee it's going to get spoiled. That happens every single time. It's like a sporting uh, event. It's a sporting event. So go and join it, please, one more time. We will see you. Thank you for joining us. For Jamie and Ken, may the force be with you always.